Now, how do we scale this up? I mean, we, just in what we've learned and a little bit I've shown you in the cohort work that we've been doing, we see it's much more complicated than we might have first um, um, thought about, well, we're going to measure all these things and we'll look at one at a time for independent effects, maybe an interaction here and there. We have a sample size that can accommodate us looking maybe at a one or two way interaction, maybe a three level interaction, but you can start to see this gets very complicated very fast. Um, and this notion of the exposome, which is on scale um, of how we think about genomics today, where we're not just measuring one gene, but looking at GWAS or genome-wide, we want to look exposure-wide. And, and we have a particular challenge here because we always have this time dimension as well. And we need to, in the ideal, um, what the exposome is, is to measure the totality and understand the impact of the totality of exposure from preconception to death on the types of um, uh, health trajectories and outcomes that we're interested in looking at. Now, this isn't a new idea. It's been around since Christopher Wilde um, first proposed it in 2005. Um, and it's been updated over time, as you can see with the references in the lower right-hand corner. But the exciting thing now is we actually are poised. We have the tools and the, the computational science to really do this in a major way right now. So it's a very exciting time for environmental health research. We liken it to um, where the genome um, project was and there was the deca decade of the genomics research and now that we're heading into the decade of exposome research. We can embrace the complexity, searching for these gene, gene, and gene environment interactions and environment, environment interactions in a significant way um, with the tools that are emerging. So how do we embrace the complexity and incorporate ex exposome into translational science? Because that's what we want it to do. We want it to translate to health. There's this review article here that walks you through a lot of the things that we're going to say very briefly here. And again, it's to keep those people on track is the idea, to identify signals and, and, and networks that can tell us what effective strategies or therapeutic interventions might we have to help people. Well, we need to take advantage of the um, emerging technologies that allow us to do highly temporally resolved exposure assessment with low burden and, and reasonable cost. And there are a lot of wearable devices and smartphones, smartwatches, and some of the geocoding that I showed you to, to do that in a very uh, significant and scalable way where we can do it across, across the country, for example, um, if we had the data sets to do that. And then we could really embrace the complexity of what begets asthma uh, that we're starting to see and starting to picture and wrap our head around as we show here in this, this graphic. Other things we can do to move exposomics forward is to understand the complexity of the human ex exposome. We need to adopt analytical strategies and study designs that incorporate integrated omics approaches, omics, not just one biomarker at a time, but to look across these different platforms, proteomics, microbiome, uh, metabolomics, epigenomics, et cetera, and learn how to integrate those. It's an exciting time in environmental health, as I've said, because we now have the tools and the computational skills to be able to advance this concept of the exposome in a significant way. We also need to adopt analytical strategies and study designs that incorporated untargeted measures of exposure. So we can look at the things we don't even know yet. Um, and not just focus on the few that we do know. And the next important step, and you're going to hear about this more in, in uh, Dr. Emily Oaken's talk, is integrating data across individual cohort studies. So we want to accelerate our ability to look, and if we start building a cohort right now, starting in pregnancy and following over the life course, it's going to take a huge amount of time and it's going to be extremely expensive. But there is a program, the ECHO program, that you're going to hear more about through the NIH that has asked um, investigators like the cohorts we talked about here and merging them with other cohorts across the country so that we can accelerate standing up this um, cohort that uh, stretches across the life course, uh, uh, not just focusing on where I was talking about early life, for example. 
We also leverage other resources that have been stood up to help us move the, the exposomic work forward, the Human Health Exposure Analysis Resource, the HEAR program, funded out of the National Institutes of Environmental Health Sciences. This is so investigators, if you have an NIH grant, you can apply to this program. And if you have samples that can be run to do some of these um, exposure assessments and untargeted um, uh, uh, analyses, and biological response analyses, you can apply and with no cost to you, you can actually work with these different lab hubs that are shown here um, and uh, get these different steps done. Now I show you the link here too, where you can find how do you apply to it, what's really available through these labs, um, and I encourage you to go look for that. Now you might be feeling a little overwhelmed. I want to reassure you, we do not need to measure it all to make significant progress on the exposome. So you do not have to be able to measure every possible exposure over the entire life course to make significant steps forward. Measure as much as you can and try to take advantage of some of these tools that allow you to do so in a, in a major um, significant way. And then um, utilize these other resources here. Take advantage of things like the, uh, this, uh, uh, integrated harmonized cohort echo or other tools like that to, to make these steps forward. Because looking ahead when I think I start earlier because it's easier to build strong, strong children than to repair broken men. You think of that picture where where do you have the most bang for your buck to put those folks back on a, a health, positive health trajectory. And this is just showing sort of the broad view of how we see this all integrating. So thank you very much. Um, it's been wonderful to be able to share with you my excitement about the potential of exposomics in this context. And you'll hear more about how this can play out in uh, the cohort studies uh, beyond what we've talked about here.